Brexit Bob 2016 Kona edition. We're brought to you by EAS Sports Nutrition, Hoka Ona One, Polar Oska Wellness, Velo Fix, Four Seasons Hualalai, where we'll be hosting our world championships on Sunday, and triathlonworld.com. Our next guest, seventh year last year, Sarah Piampiano. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm always fascinated by people who, you know, basically were athletes when they're younger. Then got in the college, got in the fun, got in the business, smoking, drinking, yeah. <laughs> and you know, going a totally different direction. That was you. It was me. I mean, I I was a really competitive, active kid when I was growing up. I mean, I was a nationally ranked runner, a yes. nationally ranked ski racer, and um, I had big hopes and dreams. And then I think when I got to college, you know, I just kind of went in a different direction. Yeah. And um, now, where were you living? After college, yeah, yeah, like college, and then were you in New York or? Yes, yeah, so I went to school in Maine, okay. um, to Colby College, which is um, kind of a small liberal arts school, yeah. and then I moved down to New York City, where I was living, and, and, and living uh, that lifestyle, and living the life down there, yeah. um, which was li long hours at work, and you know I was staying up late and partying a lot, right? And just not. I mean, it was great for for what it was when at that point in my life, um, and then in 2009 I ended up. Um, doing my first triathlon and on a bet on a bet and a bar wife, bet what a, a surprise a bar bet <laughs> now tell me the bet so basically you're with a buddy I was with a buddy yeah. and he had put on about 50 pounds after college we went to school together and he was kind of telling this group of us that he had signed up for a triathlon yeah and I don't remember the exact conversation but one thing led to you another were in a bar. Yeah, yeah. we were in a bar and we were drinking and one thing led to another and uh, we just ended up betting as to who could beat the other in this race and, and so, he had no idea you had a little bit of an athletic background well he knew that I ran in college because right. you know he, we went to school together but um, you know he knew I was smoking cigarettes and not doing anything active whatsoever so, so you weren't working kinda, out at all you caught no, that all cold turkey yeah, after college totally were yeah. you burnt out after college was it you know sometimes we see a lot of runners who because of the the coaching and the rest of it just got to the point of, I'm out, too many injuries. A, a little bit, both with running and ski racing. Okay. Um, you know, it. I, I actually dated a guy right out of school who was a big skier, and yeah. he always wanted to go skiing every single weekend, and I was just like, ugh, I, just, I really don't want to do this. And so um, I think with both running and skiing, it just, it just, I just needed a break. Right. And, um, you know, and I was also just working really long hours and just kind of got caught up in 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 what New York had to offer. Sure. So yeah, and that's the business mentality. Yeah, exactly. You, you work all day and you party at night, exactly. and then you do it. Do it. You get up <laughs> the next morning, you do it the next day. <laughs> yeah. So you go to that triathlon, and uh, I'm sure, and mentally, you probably still think I'm an athlete. Yes. Right. Yeah. And and so you're competitive. Yes. And what happened in the race? Uh, well, I went and did the race, and. Um, I was a little scared. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I mean, I had you I'm, had much open water swimming. Oh, or? none, really, none at all. And I, I did go and swim um, once before the race, just at a pool to make sure that I could swim the distance because I was I wasn't sure that I could. And how long was the race? Uh, it was Olympic distance. Oh my God! So you're yeah. talking a mile swim, a 25 yeah. mile bike, and a 10k run. And I was I was I really was just so nervous about the swim. I I was quite anxious to swim to begin with, and then the fact that I was having to start with you know, this hu huge group of people, which yeah. it, I don't even remember how many people were in the age category, but it seemed right. so big to me in, in the moment. Um, and so just to, for me to get through the swim was a big deal. And then I really hated biking. And so I just then just wanted to get through the bike because I wasn't, didn't really enjoy biking at all. And I thought, okay, well, if I can do that and get to the run, I'll be fine because I, yes. I really love to run. So, um, but it turned out to be just such a wonderful experience for me you all around. It. I mean, I loved... You know, for me, the competitive juices started flowing again. Um, I love just sort of the high that I got from from the endorphins of, of racing. Um, I was really inspired and motivated by just the sense of community and yeah. the experience on the whole. And um, it, I, I got bit by the triathlon bug. I mean, in that moment, I, I finished the race. I stopped smoking. I started working out. 
I bought a bike, um, and my life just got transformed. Well, and before, I mean, it's one thing to say, okay, I, I, this is a great hobby, I'll keep my job, and this is just something I'll do on the weekend, but, you know, by 2011, you're, you, what, you're working with Matt Dixon, and yeah. you're, you're basically trying to become a professional. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't do anything half-assed. I was going to say, you're not <laughs> a dip-your-toe-in-the-water no. type of, you're sort of the... Where's the deep end and yeah. let me jump in. Yeah, and I think, you know, when I did that first race, yeah. um, obviously I had no experience. I didn't really know a whole lot about the sport. Right. But, um, you know, as a kid, I really wanted to be in the Olympics. That's That was my dream. That was what I wanted. Is I a wanted runner or skier? Either as way. both. Both? Actually. Oh, you're I going wanted double. to be one of the first. Yes. Yes. As I, I wanted to be the first female to be in both the Summer and Winter Olympics. That is so cool. Yeah. And so um, when I went and did the triathlon, it just kind of it kind of brought back that dream of mine. And I was, you know, reading all the magazines afterwards and thinking, you know, maybe this is something I could do. So I started training a little bit more and then yeah. I went and did the second race and I was so much better in the second race. Um, it was kind of at that moment where I felt like, oh, I'm going to go for this. Like this is, I yeah. think I can do this professionally. And, you know, I don't think at the time I had any idea of how much hard work it was going to take to get to the point that I'm at now and or I don't think I had the kind of the level of respect that really was warranted for all of the you know amazing women that race and compete yeah. full time but what race did you do where you felt afterwards okay I'm heading in the right direction this is I, I can make it as a pro or has it happened yet uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know I would say last last season yeah. on the whole that really is where I started feeling like I was kind of coming into my own and, and really felt like I could um, be successful and really make yeah. a living, as you say. You know, for me, I, I wanted to give this a go, but I didn't want to be sleeping on a couch. For, no, no, you no. You know, yeah. I wanted to make enough money and, and really make a living at it where I, sure. I could be comfortable. And so I felt that way last year. And then I think um, last year when I came to Kona and you finished seventh, seventh yeah. um, that gave me the confidence that I was really headed in the right direction. And I think it's kind of gave me a confidence boost and then kind of transformed how I started approaching right. my training and racing going forward after that. Well, and I love the fact that you go, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to get good at this. I'm going to, you know, Matt Dixon, yep. he's the best. Yep. Jerry Rodriguez, yep. swim coach, he's love the him. best, right? Total. Um, I need, but to be with Jerry, I got to be in Southern California, Yep. right? Mm -hmm. So you, you again, jumping into the, to the deep end of the pool. Yeah, I mean, I'm somebody who, if I decide I'm going to do something, I want to do it right, yeah. and I want to do it 100%. And so I was willing to do whatever I needed to do to you know, be the best that I right. could be. And so for me, too, when I decided to start racing professionally, I, I left my job, and I went from working full-time to, to training and racing full-time because I felt like if you want to be a world-class pro and you want to be – at the top, you have to really be committing yourself full time well, to that. The people process, you're so. racing against are full time. Totally. And if you're part time, you're yeah. not going to beat them. But a lot, you long. know, a lot of people will kind of do that transition slowly. They'll right. kind of be working part time, yep. and and then eventually maybe hope to go full time. And I just said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go right. full board. So. So last year, when you, when you after you uh, since turning pro, yeah, what do you have? Two seventy point three wins. Three. Three now. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many Ironman wins? Two. Two Ironman wins. Yeah. And how many podiums? I have no idea. <laughs> a bunch. At one point, it was 10, so it's obviously a lot more than that. Yeah. So uh, when you came into this race last year, um, if somebody had said, hey, you're going to finish top 10 here, you're going you're gonna to finish seventh, would you have been surprised? Or did you, was that your expectation coming in and you and Matt feeling that, you know what, I, I think I'm ready to, to be up here with the best? I think coming into Kona last year, I believed that if I had, um, if I executed up to my potential, uh -huh. that I had the chance of getting in the top 10. Okay. That all being said, I believed last year, and I actually, again, believe this year that there's probably 30 women that have the same, aren't, yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. Like, if they execute to their potential, um, you know, they could be in the top 10 as well. Sure. So, you know, last year I could have had my very best race and executed to my potential and been out of the top 10. Right. And, no question. Yeah. And so, um, so the answer is yes, I, I believe that I could, but to see it actually come to fruition mm -hmm. and, and be rea reality. And, you know, I think in my mind, I was thinking like 10th or 9th, but to be seventh was, um, probably beyond my expectations. And 
just was I mean I, I was very emotional at the finish and I and I don't get very emotional at races it was it was a really um, proud moment for me in well, my career. Well if you think about it from where you started in 09 to on a bet and then you know what seven years later you're at the pinnacle I said, no this is the deepest field there is yeah it's not like you went to Iron Man whatever and you know, got seventh. You went right. to the race where Ed, nobody here is training through the race. Nobody here is looking at the sub B race. This is it. This is it. And yeah. if you're finishing seventh among the very best in the world, you're one of the very best in the world. Yes. That's that's a hell of a statement. Yeah. That feels pretty good. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and then this year you go and you win Vine Man. Yep. But and dominate that. Yes. And that had to add another, you know, uh, another uh, check mark for you. Going, okay, I didn't just win a race. I dominated the race. Yeah, it was um, it was great. I mean, it, that was a huge confidence booster for me. And um, this year, I took a very different approach to my race schedule. Mm -hmm. um, actually, had a lighter race schedule and did um, much bigger training blocks. Right. Where I was really trying to build my strength um, on the bike and the run in particular. And um, for me, Vineman just validated all of that work that I had been doing, and it it was great. I mean. I think that very few people in their career have the opportunity to win by such a large margin. So no. I, I, if it never happens again, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, it was just kind of one of those days. But uh, and I was really grateful for that and, and excited about it. But it gave me a lot of confidence going into Kona um, this year in terms of where I'm at and 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 also just in terms of my Kona prep, sure. kind of what I still needed to do to get ready. A lot of times people have, um, you know, there's expectations on them. Once you finish top 10, now it's okay, yep. seventh, right? It's <laughs> like, okay, Sarah, podium, we need podium. Yeah. But you seem like the type of person that whatever expectations other people are going to put on you, yours are going to be a lot higher anyway. Yeah, So true. You know, so it's not really going to be. Yeah. Matt's had to have a few talks with me and kind of talk me off the ledge yeah. a little bit during the last few months because, you know, I do have really high expectations for myself. I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that my... My big goal, you know, over the next several years is to try to win Kona. Of course. I mean, that's something yes. that I really want to achieve. And so, yeah, I want to I wanna perform better than I did last year. And, um, you know, Matt Dixon was great and that he just sort of has reset me a bunch of times and said, your goal needs to be to have a better performance than you had last year in Kona. Right. It's not about the placing. It's about your performance. Performance, right. Um, and that's sort of what I have in my head. And, um keep kind of repeating to myself because I think for everybody when you get too focused on the um, on the place, time or place and the play yeah, yeah or the time it actually just completely detracts from the most important thing which is kind of the process mm -hmm. that you have to go through on race day so um, but yes I do have really high expectations <laughs> for myself this year so when you were out in the in the in the Queen on the Queen K highway or down in the energy lab yep. and you you know you could see where you were at place wise yep. Was it more of a, this is what should be going on, this is what I expected, or was it a, oh my God, I am here in the mix, I am right here? It was a little bit of, oh my God, and okay, this is, this is I can do this type yeah. of thing. Um, you know, for me last year, and I think you'll see this again this year, and you probably see it every year, um, everybody tends to go out quite hard on the first 10 miles of the run. And so I think I only um, gained one spot right um out and back on Ali. so for, for the yes. first 10 or 12 miles like i only moved up one place and it was when i entered the energy lab between when i entered the energy lab and came out of the energy lab i think i had moved up like six spots oh my god so you picked off six women in the energy yeah. lab. yeah yeah and then in a matter of like two miles i've had passed like another four women i mean it was just sort of like almost in a very short span of time yes. i started picking people off and um in some ways probably expect something similar this year. Um, you know, the one thing that I think I do a really good job of is um, race Racing. execution. Yeah. And I don't get off, I won't get off the bike and chase. I, you know, for me, the goal is to get off the bike and run a really smart and consistent race. And last year, I think I had this, the fastest second half of the marathon. Um, and my hope is this year, you know, same maybe thing. it could be the same thing, you know? So I think you'll, you'll probably see a lot of girls get off run really fast in the first 10 miles, you won't see that with me. I'm going to be trying to be as consistent as possible. Perfect. Yeah. And it, now that you're in this sport, and it is, you are a businesswoman. Right? I am. You yeah. are a businesswoman. So figuring out how the business of Sarah 
yes. the business of Sarah, making sure that you're marketing yourself mm -hmm. and making sure that you know you can make a living in this sport. Yeah, has uh, that been a fun challenge for you? It has. I mean, it's um, you know, for me on a personal level, yeah. my goal is to be successful professionally, but I also kind of want to be a part of transforming the sport because I think one of the things are triathlon in general has struggled with is um, you know we have all these athletes who are tremendously talented mm -hmm. and they work really really hard but they don't necessarily market and brand themselves that well and so the sport itself has kind of it hasn't really branched out into the mainstream in the way that you'd, you'd like you it, it to yep. and so you know I'm trying to to promote myself but also in doing so the goal is to, to, is grow to promote the sport, the sport. Grow the athletes. yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah, more awareness for our pro athletes would be a good thing. Exactly. You know, and that's that's where the, the big sponsorships come in and yes. and the money. And, you know, if it doesn't happen in my career, in my lifetime, you know, hopefully some part of what I'm doing will, you know, make a difference to, to you know, the next generation of athletes that are Have coming Have you up. run into the guy who you had the bet with back in 2009? Oh, yeah, we're still in contact. Is he surprised at what you've done? He loves it. He thinks it's so great. So a, he doesn't um, do triathlons anymore okay. um he did a bunch of ironmans and then kind of burnt out gave that up. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually lives in singapore now but he's an avid cyclist and travels all around the world cyclist. and so he actually came um i guess the last year i think or second last year that they did ironman melbourne he yes. flew to melbourne and came and watched me race so How fun is that, that was really cool yeah now your brothers yeah <laughs> who spent all of your early years beating the crap out yep, of you. Yep. I love the the blueberries and yeah. the pellet gun. That's <laughs> yeah. my favorite favorite yeah. thing ever. Now that you're you know you're an Ironman champion and you're a world class athlete, do they still give you crap? Oh, no? totally. Still. Totally. Totally. So you're still the little girl totally. when you come home. Totally. I mean, my so my I'm 36. My oldest brother is uh, 45. Yeah. And then my next brother is is 41. So they're you know they're grown men. They have children. You know, they're, they're yeah. in relationships. They're very mature individuals. And when I get in their presence, they pin me down and water torture me. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, they pretty much do every And they gang up on me together. Of course. And, and their wives just sit there and they just shake their heads. And they're like, like what you know, they're acting like children. It's just ridiculous. But they love it. And I think, you know, it's part of what makes our relationship strong. And I, as much as I hate it in the moment, I, I actually really love it, too. <laughs> You don't want them ever to change. No, no. Blueberries and pellet guns, that's forever. Yeah. <laughs> I love totally. that. Hey, Sarah, thanks so much for taking time. Yeah, Always thank a pleasure. You. Hey, have a great race thank on you Saturday. So much. Thank you. Poncho thank Man. <laughs> Do you remember when we met? That's the day I knew you were my pet. And I want to tell you how much. Preface with Bob and Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. Macho man. Oh, awesome. Hey, let's get a photo, Heidi.